believe it or not, there is a man behind all of this manga haul, um, physically. So yes, that's me, the Uncanny Omar, and stay tuned as I show off my haul for the last couple of months of all these manga volumes that I picked up. So, let's get started. Welcome back everybody. Before getting started, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. We put out videos every day and all that helps with our YouTube algorithm and our channel keep growing. Uh, so I was suggested by a lot of you mentees to separate my manga haul from my graphic novel haul. So I'll, uh, I'll still be doing my graphic novel haul every month. However, the manga hauls I'll probably do every couple of months or I don't know, we'll see. For the last few months, as you saw my last video, the huge manga haul, I got bit by the manga box set bug and decided, hey, I want to start picking some of these up or upgrading some of my previous volumes that I've had over the years or pick up volumes that I've been missing. So that's what today's haul is about. Just the last few months that I picked up the rest of these box sets. So let's get that box cutter open and get these out of plastic and talk about these books. First book we're going to be looking at is The Day I Become a Butterfly by Sumo Yumeka. This is published by June, who was a DMP manga at the time. It does have a dust jacket which is nice. I don't really see that often in manga these days, especially those translated here in America. I have not read this, but I do know the premise is about a young man who's been diagnosed with a terminal disease and he has hopes of becoming a butterfly after he passes. So that's what this is about. And y'all, and wow, this is a rated young adult, 16 plus. So it is done in the traditional right to left. Actually, all of these are, so I don't need to repeat myself. All of these are done in the traditional right to left format. Finally, after a year of searching, I finally found Pandora Hearts, one of my biggest whales. Actually, my biggest whales is the Pandora Hearts box set. But hey, one day, you know, you got to keep those whales. You got to you gotta keep hunting after those whales. But anyway, this is volume 23. This is June Mochizuki's Pandora Hearts. And I bought a complete set last year from somebody. Well, incomplete because it was missing volume 23. So I thought, yeah, well, let's wait around. I'll find it. I kept forgetting about it. Months later, the stupid book went out of print. And you all know how crazy manga gets in the aftermarket prices. It's insane. So this is a fun book. I started reading it and then I decided to stop. It's about this kid named Oz who travels through the abyss. He meets this girl named Alice. So while it has elements of things like, yes, the wonderful Wizard of Oz and Alice through the looking glass, there's a lot of Japanese mythology that's in here too. But anyway, I think I, I read the first four volumes and stopped and I said, wait, I'm just going to wait until I get the third volume. So here it is, Yen Press's Pandora Hearts. Hopefully they'll reprint that beautiful box set. I wasn't collecting box sets back then, but hey, who knows? Anything's possible. Nostalgia got the better of me with this. This is Rurouni Kenshin. And what happened was the Netflix movie came out, the final movie. And I had these in the small Tonkaban size. But I know the Viz Big Editions have the color pages, and I always wanted to own them. And of course, after watching it, I found out that these were out of print. These are the three in one. Not to, I'm sorry, not to be confused with the Omnibus three in ones, but the Viz Big, uh, the bigger editions. So these are bigger. They do have three in one, but they're taller than your average Tonkaban, and they have the color pages all in here. You know, this is a series that I loved when I first saw in the late '90s, early aughts fell in love with the just the the wandering samurai so it this is the complete set i know that there was a follow-up series to this but not sure if this is going to translate it or not here in america but this is what some of the artwork looks like this is what the anime is based on this is what the movies are based on the ovas are based on yeah, the man right there but this is the complete set of the original Rurouni Kenshin in this big format. This is the set that I bought and they threw in the book, The Day I Become a Butterfly. But this is Ron and the Gray World. Now, nostalgia did not drive me to get this, but that cover did. The colors, the way that she's sitting up there, no idea what this is about. I started reading the first issue a couple of days ago. Here's what the first issue, sorry, used to talk in Western comics. The first volume. And just showcasing the artwork for the covers here. And I loved it. I thought it was a cute story. So it's the story of Ron, this young sorceress, who can't wait to be an adult. Reminds me a lot of my oldest daughter. 
and she uses these magical tennis shoes to become an adult. Now, here, let me show you what some of the artwork looks like inside. The back covers are also beautiful. So she decides to put on these sneakers and becomes an adult. Now, keep in mind, even though she has powers and even though she's an adult, she still has the mind of a child. So it's up to her family to try to get her back. Uh, she's, <laughs> she, of course, is taken advantage of by this young playboy in here, but it's, I mean, this is really a book that isn't, you know, it's not mature content, it's it's teen. I think it's rated teen plus, but I'd be okay with my 12 year old reading uh, the stuff that's in here. I thought it was a cute story. This is the type of artwork to expect in here. And this is part of the Viz Signature series, meaning that these are a little bit taller and wider than your average Tonkabon. So the story and art are all supplied by Aki Eda in here. And this seems like a really quick read. Like I said, I've read the first volume pretty quick. So here, let's showcase some art from a future volume. So I'll probably be diving in and wrapping this up before I go and start rereading some Robin for my next reading order. But here it is, Ron and the Great World. Now, for those new to the channel, I've talked about this vaguely, but there were some phases of my life where I was in and out of anime, uh, whether it was in the 80s or 90s or early aughts, and then they brought me back. Something always brings me back. This I remember so well because I watched the entire series in one sitting, and then there was two follow-up series, but this is Sayuki, and this is the original series right here. This is the resurrected editions from... Kodansha Studios. So here's all four of the covers. This is the complete series. There was a Sayuki Reload series later on. I don't know if they're going to be bringing that back, but these were originally published by Tokyo Pop in America. And these are the hardcover versions. There are no dust jackets in these, but the artwork is just a little bit bigger than your average Tonkabon. But yes, this is the story of Goku. Like, that's, well, you know, the original Goku, the original legend is what this is loosely based on. Just like Dragon Ball Z and Dragon Ball Z is loosely based on that legend of Son Goku. But this is what the artwork looks like. I remember really liking this series when I was watching it. And, you know, only four volumes, even though they are three and ones, I think, or two and a half and ones is the way that it looks like. Yeah. So it's bigger than an average volume. But just showcasing some of the artwork that you'll be finding in here. Each one of the covers features a different character from the story. And like I said, these are hardcover. I think the retail of these were twenty, yeah, twenty two ninety nine. So they weren't too bad. They're like the um, this one's a lot thicker. This is like a four in one book. But just showcasing some of the artwork in this last volume here. Make sure there's no spoilers. But they kind of remind me. Um, of the Soul Eater uh, hardcovers, which I need to pick up on that. So you may see those in my future pickup manga haul videos. But this is what the artwork looks like. One of my favorite manga kais I've stated many times on the channel before are the ladies that make Clamp. And one of my favorite series that I've fallen in love with time and time again because of the anime, because of the catchy intro song is Magic Knight Ray Earth. So this is the second box set. I can't believe I forgot about it. I had the first box set. I did an unboxing of it. Let's get these out. Uh, a few, oh my gosh, has it been two years maybe? Since the first one came out. So this comes with three books. And then the art book right there, which we'll be looking at. This is the illustrations collection. Just taking a second to admire those covers. You have Hikaru, Umi, and Fu, the Magic Knights. The this is one of the earliest uh, isekais where these young ladies go to another dimension to go and save it, and it's got a spin. I love the spin to that story. So, this is the follow up. This is where uh, they did m end up coming back to Earth, but something calls them back to the land. That oh man, I love the outfits, I love the ridiculous tall male characters that are in here how long their necks are are ridiculous like look at the size comparison between this guy and hikaru but this is the type of artwork it is early clamp it's when they used to do their eyes much like this you know and you can always tell it was a clamp comic get foo looking all cute but 
yeah, this is Magic Knight Ray Earth 2. So let's look at the illustration guide because I don't want to spoil any of the story in case you haven't read it. I was just telling my co-host Tina that she should get that symbol as a tattoo because I know Umi is her favorite. For me, always Hikaru. So if you've read Magic Knight Ray Earth, if you play the Sega Saturn version, if you play the Super Nintendo version, if you've watched the anime, if you watch the OVA, who's your favorite Magic Knight? Hikaru for me. Oh, man. All right, let's look at this little art book here. So the first box set also came with an art book, and this is where the extras um, and the colored, yeah, these right here are going to be found from the manga. This is all drawn and colored by Clamp. Clamp? I don't know why I said Clump. This is what they use for the covers. Absolutely stunning. Just different characters from the different stories here Mokona and my daughter still has the stuff Mokona I got her so I hope they do other collections like this from Clamp love a hardcover set of X and I realize X is not finished but it's my favorite story that they did Subasa is awesome big fan of Subasa Holic you know they've been they've been around for a long time so there's a little fold-out poster here. Now, the very first three big box sets we're going to be looking at is the Bleach Collection. This is everything. Uh, both box set two and three are vertical, whereas box set one is horizontal. Not sure if that was on purpose or not to better stack these. I don't know. But this is everything. This is volumes one through 74. Let's go ahead and get these open. So this collects volumes one through 21. Here we have the main cast right there and some more character arts right on top. We have Ichigo and Chad and Orihime Rukia as well as some of the generals there. Actually, let's show the sides because I didn't get to show the sides here. Some more artwork. And then this bleeds into the bottom a little bit. That's pretty cool. And just to tell you ahead of time that the box set as of right now is out of print, but it will be back into print. I did talk to Viz. Uh, they, they're having a hard time keeping books in stock. So this is the way it opens up. It has Velcro up here. Nice little handle. And then where it all began with Volume 1, Ichigo. Man, this brings back memories of going to my buddy rob 64's house and melanie and i watching this with him and his wife and just falling in love with the story falling in love with rukia and following ichigo's avenger like adventures like what happened to his mom all these little secrets and this is tai kubo's masterpiece however i mean to put my two cents in here here's a little booklet well actually let's Look at the other box sets here in a second. This is the exclusive little booklet that comes in this box set. So if you own these individually, there's nothing extra. There's nothing added except for this and a little poster that they added. It's a little two-sided poster, but this is it. Moving on to the second box set. So here you have Ichigo. Here you have some more of the characters. I don't think they have many spoilers, if any. Kenpachi. He was always my dude. No, my brother, Manuel, he always loved Renji there. He named his dog after Renji. And there's Rukia. See, there's a lot of fond memories of Bleach. Nothing at the bottom besides the price. Retail of this one is $214.99. So this one opens from the side. Again, we have Velcro. And there we go. Collecting volumes 22 to 48, where they change the color. So... Let's just look at some of the little artwork here from 48. Who the heck is that? Well, you could find out by reading it. Now, what I was going to say is that, sadly, Bleach doesn't have that great of an ending, at least to me. Uh, I'm not going to spoil what happens or anything. And I don't mean the story. Well, maybe I do a little bit. Let's look at this little extra booklet. Um, this is the pilot chapter. Okay, this is the story that came out before he published um, Bleach. So he did, what was the other manga he did? He did a little four-volume Tonka Bond called Zombie Powder. So what I was going to say is that I meant it didn't have a happy ending for the creator, Taikubo, because he was just burnt out on doing Bleach. He wanted to end it long before the editors forced him to keep making Bleach. Let's look at the last box set and talk a little bit about that story. 
Here's the third box set with this image of Ichigo, just a complete badass. There we have some of the captains. And over here, who are these people? Well, oh, wow, that's an awesome picture. There we go. That one does have a little bit of a spoiler, but not if you don't know what you're looking for. And then the bottom is just a blank, black bottom. This one retails for $1.99. Interesting that box set two is the most expensive. All right, let's get this open. So here we have volumes 49 to 74 with an image of Ichigo here on the left. Let's look at one of these volumes. So yeah, by now it's changed to red. So what I was saying is that there, there's this whole misconception, or not really a misconception, but there's this whole thing going on right now about Western versus manga comics. Like, why is manga outselling Western comics? And I've heard it brought up a lot on my live streams on Saturdays. And honestly, that's always been the case, though. I've always thought manga outsold American comics in America. Uh, not not worldwide, uh, but pretty, actually, no, no, worldwide, too. Because I know they outsell them in Japan. But why is that? What Why is the case of that? And there's a lot of factors that go into it. But one of the things that I don't bring up, that I didn't bring up, that I should bring up more often, is also the treatment of the mangaka, the, the, their creators. Uh, let's make sure there's no spoilers. No, there's not spoilers on this one. By now, if you haven't read it or anything, you don't even know who these characters are because they look so different. Um, because the creators, you know, they're forced into these working conditions where... They have to pump out so many chapters every week. Uh, I looked at Rumiko Takahashi's schedule. Like, the amount of sleep that poor woman gets. She's one of my favorite manga ka. And it's crazy. So, there's such a demand and high demand from just the manga fans, the uh, otakus, just fans all over the world for these books. And I'll always think of Miura this way. Because, it, it, honestly, Miura's death opened my eyes to the treatment of the manga cop by their editors, by their fans, because we have such a high demand, we need the next volume. So by volumes, I think, here we go, like 58, 59, you'll see a change in Taikubo's artwork, but that, that's a whole different story. I just wanted to showcase the box set. Sorry, I'm getting a little preachy. Let's keep going. The one box set I bought completely blind. No idea what this is about. My friend, my co-host, my wonderful TikTok Tina told me to get this box set. It's about a young man. Oh, that's all she told me. That enrolls himself. The young man's not even on the... There he is, I guess. This guy right here. That enrolls into a school of not just vampires, but werewolves and other creatures. So when you open it up like this, this is all vertical. You have this image here of all these ladies. So she described it as a harem manga um, that all these girls, all these creatures, these females have a crush on him. And he's the only normal guy going going to the school. So this collects season one and season two. Season one ending with book number nine and then season... Oh, I'm sorry, book number ten. I'll be Uncanny Omar count pretty one day. So book number ten and season... That looks like an anime. Season one and then season two begins with book 11 and that's an awesome cover so harem manga is you know it's a big trope in manga and anime in japan and you know honestly tenchi muyo and love hina were the my favorites and i know it's an overused trope and i know they've had uh what is it the gender switch now where the female is being sought after by a bunch of male characters wait is that even a gender switch i thought that was always a thing but anyway uh, I'm so out of the loop on new manga. I have no idea if they still... Is harem manga still a thing? Sure. Surely. Right? Right? Anyway, this is what the artwork looks like. And this is all written and drawn by Akihisa Ikeda. Actually, the artwork looks really nice. So this is one that she strongly suggested. It was on sale. And this one... Actually, I think this is one of the few that's of the box sets that is still in print. Let's see what the extra is on this. So we have this Rosario Vampire. Shonen Jump Advance. I that's what the that's what this category was. Shonen Jump Advance. So this also reads right to left. It is the bonus color story. I guess not spoil that. And then it's got some little pinups in the back here. It's not very not very many pages, as you can probably tell. It's thin. But this is Rosario Vampire. Yeah, let me know in the comments if you've read this. It looks interesting, and I like the artwork. 
out of all the box sets I ended up getting, this is the one that took me a while to put together because that volume one box set was completely gone everywhere. And people were just charging outrageous prices. Luckily, I'm part of some Facebook groups that sell used box sets, and I don't care. I, 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 don't, I didn't mind getting it used, so here we go. The reason I upgraded my Tonkaban, which I have all the Tonkaban, uh, to this particular box set is because Volume 4 was announced, or the box set 4 was announced for, I think, November, but it might be pushed back until January. Uh, but, you know, that's that, that will catch us up, and it's, to me probably the best way so to catch up so we have volume one volume two and volume three so let's look at volume one and then we'll look at the next volumes top 20 favorite manga of all time of course i had to own it in the best possible format until they come up with how hard covers right and if they do am i stupid enough to freaking rebuy these if they have color pages you're damn right I am. So here we have volume one of the box set. Here's what the bottom looks like. This is the Baroque works. It's so known as the Baroque works, the beginning of One Piece. So down there is a little booklet. Do love looking at these extra booklets. Uh, this is the only thing that's extra that's included in this box set that was not anywhere else. So this is the same stuff that you would get if you bought them uh, individually. There's nothing new about these box, or I'm sorry, these Tonkabon volumes. And this is the only thing that's new. It's called the Romance Stone. So this is an extra story of the Straw Hats. So I wonder what time... Oh, this is a flashback with Shanks and Luffy. Okay. Yeah. Big fan of One Piece. I know Wonder Maddie's a huge fan of One Piece. But, man, this, this brings back memories because this was the one title that I was hooked on when this decided to bring over their Shonen Jump monthly magazine. Look at Nami right there. Zoro. Um, Zoro's my favorite. Yeah, Zoro's the man. Dude that fights with three swords, one in his mouth. Come on. And, man. Oda does so much world building, it's insane. It's not fair to other... Here, let's keep going. I take it back. There is a little poster in the back. So that's two little things that are extra with this box set. That you don't get if you buy them individually. Okay, okay. Three if you include the box. All right, let's actually, no, let's look at the second box set. So here we have the Water 7 and Skypiea, two of the biggest arcs. And I know people are divided with Skypiea. Some people like it, some people don't. I happen to like just about every arc in one piece. Even the one they're going through right now with the flashbacks, but I'm not going to spoil that. There's the bottom of it. And I think these volumes two and three of these came back in a print a couple months ago. That's when I got them. Let's go ahead and get this open. Yeah, volumes 24 through 46. And if you don't know anything about One Piece, oh my gosh, maybe Maddie and I should do a One Piece review. Why we love it so much. What makes One Piece so excellent. What makes it such a great manga. Um, and to me, a lot of it has to do with the world building. I think this is the perfect example of world building. You start off with something small. You start off with the search for the One Piece. And yes, that's kind of your MacGuffin throughout the whole series. But it's about... Oh my gosh, this sounds so stereotypical. The friendships we made along the way. Is that what the One Piece... No, One Piece is not going to be that. I think he said it's... Never mind. Anyway, so to me, this is just how it all starts off with something small. It gets bigger and bigger. The world gets bigger. The seas get bigger. The adventures get bigger. The cast that joins gets bigger and bigger. And something happens towards the middle of it where they do a time jump. Let's look at this little extra book and the poster that comes in here. This is the Strong World poster. So there's one side of the poster right there by Eichido Oda, the creator of One Piece. And then you have the Strong World. This is film, oh my gosh, was it film number nine? I can't remember. There was big hype about that one, I remember. Oh, this is Strong World right here. Is this the Strong World adaptation? I had no idea there was such a thing. It's the prologue to the grand epic. Okay. I've never read this. That's cool. Yeah, so Strong World was one of the films um, that was an original story. So here we have box set three until box set four comes out later this year. Awesome picture of Luffy in the straw hat. So you see his cast growing and growing. You see Sanji. You see Nico Robin. You see Brooks over there. And here's what it looks like. 
You have the Impel Down arc, which leads into the Paramount War. I love this arc. This is like the Prison Break arc. And remember when I said there was a time jump? That all kicks off with this right here, Volume 61, New World. So this is a couple of years after something huge happens in the life of the Straw Hat. And damn, it's so good. I can't... This is a book I look forward to reading every time it comes in. I was a few, oh my gosh, I was about a year behind, so I was about four to five volumes behind. That's how much he puts out. And here's the poster that it comes with. So what I was saying is that this brings back memories. This is one of the reasons I used to get the monthly Shonen Jump because of the One Piece segments. And then they started come out, out, coming out with the Tonka Bonds. And... So all that's in this one is a box set. And yeah, I decided to go the Tonka Bond route. But at one time, we did have Shonen Jump in America. And it was selling really well. So I don't know if they'll ever bring it back or not. I know it's huge in Japan. It comes out every week, I think. Different versions of Shonen Jump and other anthology magazines. But at least we did get this. And it got huge. People talk about this all the time. Like People I wasn't expecting to fall in love with One Piece fell in love with One Piece. I think it's great. But that as they say, is that. Now, if you're interested in purchasing any of these books, don't forget to check out our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by CheapGraphicNovels.com, your online home for brand new graphic novels and collected editions up to 50% off cover price. They pride themselves on packaging your books so they arrive safely in an excellent condition as well as prompt and helpful service. Check out the bargain deals for up to 90% off cover price. CGN is excited to announce that they are now taking pre-orders. They're making it easier for you to ensure that you don't miss out on the hottest releases. CGN is currently running a special promotion for your mentees. If you're a first-time customer, let them know that you were referred by near mint condition at the checkout and you'll receive a credit for free shipping on your next order. This promotion is valid for U.S. customers only. Cheap Graphic Novels, your source for the hottest books with a kind of deep discount and quality shipping and customer service that will keep you coming back for more. And that's it. That was my huge manga haul. I haven't forgotten. I will be doing a tour of my manga uh, here in the next few months. So subscribe to the channel and stay tuned. Turn on those notifications to let you know when our videos are going live. And like I said, I'll be doing more manga haul videos later on. And stay tuned for my graphic novel haul for the month of July. I can't even remember what month we're on. Thank you all so much. Right, I have a hole right here. I could have been doing it through here. Thank you all so much for watching. Hit that like button, subscribe, ring that bell for notifications. We are on Patreon and on Spreadshop. Amazing ways to support the channel if you can do so. And more importantly, all of you, stay healthy, stay safe. Much love.